Hi there, welcome back to another video. In this time, we're taking a look into the world of quadratic sequences. Now, at school, at college, wherever, you might be told to remember these formulas for quadratic sequences. And as is becoming a recurring theme with my videos, I don't want you to just learn these formulas. I want you to understand the deeper meaning behind them and actually how to arrive at them. So let's say you're in exam, a question on quadratic sequences come up and you forgot the formulas. I want to give you a way that you can find out these formulas without having to memorize them. And we do this in a few simple steps. So let's take a look at the formulas. The first one says that the second difference of the terms is 2 times a. The second one says that if you add the coefficients a, b, and c, you get the first term. And the third one says that 3a plus b is the second term minus the first term. Now, let's take a look at a quick example, and we'll come back to this once we understand the formulas. Right, so here's our example. And just as an illustration of this formula, this says that the coefficient of our sequence, which will look something like this, a n squared plus b n plus c, this says that a plus b plus c equals 2. So that's what our formula says. Right? It says the second difference, which we've not calculated, is 2a. And it says that 3a plus b equals the second term minus the first term, which is 15. Right? So now what we're going to do is take a look at these formulas in greater detail and then come back to this example. Right, so what I've done here is set up the general equation of our nth term sequence. So I've called it s of n, because that's kind of standard for sequences, and it's a n squared plus b n plus c. So by this notation, this tells us that s1 is the first term. Maybe I'll put equals just to make sure it's not a minus. s2 is the second term and so on. S3 is the third term. Yeah, and you get the picture. Right, the first of our formulas we're going to prove straight away now. So, if S1 is the first term, then what is S1? Well, it's Sn evaluated at n equals 1. So, S of 1 equals a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c. And if you simplify all this, you will get a plus b plus c. So that is our formula 1 done. The first term of our sequence is the same as the three coefficients. Nice and easy. So tick. We've done number 1. Let's take a look at our sequence in a bit more detail. Right, so let's lay out our sequence as we would normally. So we'd have S1, S2, S3, and S4. And we could go on. Then as is usual in these quadratic sequences, we would work out the difference between these two terms. And this would give us a number here. But to find this difference, we just do S2 take away S1. Right. To find this number here, we do S3 take away S2. And to find this difference, we do S4 take away S3. Now bear with me, I know this looks a bit tricky. Now, Let's have a look at this difference S2 minus S1, because we know one of our formulas involves these. So let's do that. All right, so remember S1 is A plus B plus C. And now S2, again, all we've got to do is plug N equals 2 into our formula here. So we get A times 2 squared plus B times 2 plus C. And if you work this out carefully, you will get 4a plus 2b plus c. Right, now let's take a look at the difference s2 take away s1. Which is, by the way, I'll just write it out. It's the second term take away the first term. And this is equal to, so s2 here is 4a plus 2b plus c. And I'll do the takeaway in a negative, and we'll put brackets in just to be safe. A plus B plus C. So if you do this carefully, you will get 3A 
plus 2b minus b, which is b, plus c minus c. So what have we shown here? Well, we've shown that the second term minus the first term is 3a plus b, and this is our formula too. So that's done. Okay, moving on to formula number three. Okay, so we've just shown formula two. That is that the difference between the second term and the first term is the same as 3a plus b. Okay, now remember our last formula was 2a equals the second difference. And what we mean by the second difference is when we consider the difference between these two terms. So this is S3 minus S2, and again we'll do it in brackets just to be extra clear. Take away S2 minus S1. And again, this one is S4 minus S3, take away S3 minus S2. Now if your sequence is quadratic, these two should be exactly the same, so we only need to work out one of them. So let's do that. Okay, first we remember that S2 minus S1 is 3a plus b, and now we just need to work out S3. Well, S3 is a lots of 3 squared plus b lots of 3 plus c. And this equals, well, 3 squared is 9, so it's 9a plus 3b plus c. So what is the difference S3 minus S2? Well, it's 9a plus 3b plus c, and then take away S2, which was our 4a plus 2b plus c. Right, good. And simplifying this, we get 5a, 3b minus 2b is b, and c minus c is 0. So in total then, this difference here, S3 take away S2, minus S2 take away S1 equals 5a plus b minus 3a plus b. And if you do this all correctly, you should get 2a. And that is our formula number three, proved. Excellent, let's take a look at a quick example to illustrate this. Right then, we've returned to this example. And if you remember before we had a plus b plus c equals two, 3a plus b equals 15. And now we know why these formulas work. We proved them for any sequence. So let's take a look at the second difference and then we'll be good to go. So this difference here is 15, 17 to 40 is 23, and 40 to 71 is 31. Therefore the second differences are 8. And remember our other formula said the second difference is 8, so 2a is 8, which implies that a equals 4. Good, so now we can plug a equals 4 into here, and we get 3 lots of 4 plus b equals 15, and this implies that b equals 3. Excellent. Right, and finally we can plug b into this formula, and a, to get our final answer. So a plus b plus c, well this equals 4 plus 3 plus c and this should be equal to 2. So let's just isolate this. And from this, we can tell that c has to be minus 5, which means that our nth term is 4n squared plus 3n minus 5. And that is how you use these formulas in, in an example. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it makes sense that we can in any case derive these formulas so you don't need to necessarily remember them. Thanks very much for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed and a comment and subscribe if you're not already. Stay tuned for upcoming videos. Bye bye.